Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. Today I think we'll do a painting that I've had a lot of letters requesting. A lot of people have written and said, Bob, I'd like to know how to do a very simple little sunset. So I want to show you how to do that today. Let's go on up here and let me tell you what I've already got done. Today we have an 18 by 24 inch black canvas and that's painted with a black gesso and then the black gesso is allowed to dry. On top of that, I've covered the entire canvas with alizarin crimson, just a thin, even coat. And in the corners, we've put a little bit of Van Dyke brown just to darken it. And then a couple of places here, I've added a little bit of thalo blue, just to have some little streaks. So I'll tell you what, let's start off and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. While they're doing that, let's go on up here and get started. Today, I'm gonna to start with just plain titanium white on the two inch brush and just add a little color to the brush by just tapping, just a little, doesn't take much. Now remember the canvas is already covered with the alizarin crimson and the brown and a little touch of blue here and there. Not much blue, and keep the blue toward the top of the canvas, okay? Now, immediately today, we have to make a big decision. Normally we don't have to make any, but today we have to make a big decision. Basically, where's your horizon gonna be? Because that, that will be the lightest area if this is going to be a sunset type painting. So let's make a decision and decide that right here, right along here, will be the horizon. And I'm just using little crisscross strokes and start in this light area and begin working outward. Just like so. But I'm using the brush like so and then little strokes. Like, see, just little strokes. So it makes little patterns in here. Okay, and we can add a little more white here and there. And just begin laying in some little, some happy little things here and there. Now there it hit a little bit of the blue, so you're gonna get sort of a, sort of a little lavender feel, and that's nice. That's very nice. There. Okay. Now this is a fantastic painting to do for friends. Uh, and don't tell them you've put anything on the canvas and they see you starting out with just white paint and you start putting this on and all of these beautiful colors appear and they think you're magic. So try that. You'll enjoy it. There we go. We have teachers that travel all over the country and I have them do paintings where, where they start out like this. People don't know they have anything on the canvas and then they start just adding plain old white and all these beautiful colors appear and immediately they have an audience that oh, they just they stay with them for a long time. There we go. And we want this to be the brightest area right in here. But isn't that a fantastic sky already? You could leave it just like that if you wanted to and have a winner. Okay, and then just use long strokes just to sort of bring it all together. Okay, I love these black canvases. Some of the most exciting effects in this technique happen. There. Okay, now then, let me wash my brush. And we wash our brush, as you know, with odorless thinner. Get rid of that excess. <laughs> and beat the devil out of it. Tell you what, let's go right into a little touch of the cadmium yellow. Just a small amount of paint on the brush. Just tap a little in there. Okay, let's go right back up here. Maybe right here, I'll add a little yellow. There you go. You wonder where the yellow went. There it is. That's where it went. And just sparkle this area here. Now, we don't want to let this go up too high. We have a little bit of blue on the canvas up in here. We don't want to let that yellow get up into that blue. If it does, you're going to have a bright green sky, and then you're going to be upset with me. Don't want you to be unhappy. I'm going to add a touch of yellow ochre. And we can just add a little of that here and there. But still using that little, sort of like just let it sort of rock back and forth. And it creates all kinds of happy little things in the sky. Maybe up in here, just to change the color. We're getting very close to that blue there, so be careful. Mm, isn't that a 
unbelievable little sky, and it's so simple. It really is one of the easiest skies to do because all your color is done beforehand. You put all that crimson on there, and it just works for you. And that black gesso holds it so well. And the black gesso is designed specifically for this type of painting. Works good. Okay, now then, very lightly, go across the entire sky. And we can wash our brush one more time. Get rid of that excess. Shake it off. Then we're in business again. Okay, now then, I'm gonna use, we'll use the little fan brush. And I'm gonna go into a little touch of blue. Stay low blue. Stay low blue. And a lot of alizarin crimson. Proportionately, much, much more crimson than the blue. Much, much more. In case we hit yellow, we don't want it to turn green. Now, if you're not sure what color you have there, add a little white to yours. Put a little over here and add a little white, and you can tell exactly what you have. Okay, now then, let's have just some little floater clouds around here. And just sort of, still using that same little stroke, just let some of these little things just sort of float around. Let them have fun. See, wherever you want them to go. Maybe there's some little ones that they come right down into the into that bright spot. Wherever, wherever. Here's here's a little one over here. I see it. There it is. So you just sort of just sort of make these things up in your mind and let them drop in. Maybe right in here. There's one. There's an old big one that just sort of floats around. See how you can create the illusion of all kinds of beautiful effects. Just like so. You need these dark ones to make that color stand out. Just like so. There we are. That's just thalo blue and lizard and crimson. That's all there is to it. Now back to our big brush. Make sure it's dry. You want to you want a dry brush for this. If you take a wet brush and go over this, the color is going to mix together and you're going to be living in Mud City. It'll all turn to mud on you, and we don't want that. We want to keep these colors vibrant and happy and just beautiful. Be sure your brush is dry. I can't say that enough. You might want, to, might want to run it against some paper towels or something just to make sure. There we go. And all we're doing here is still just following those little I don't know what, what we want to call it. maybe little rocking strokes, like so. Like that. But isn't that a super way to make a very, very nice sky? Mm. You have to wear your sunglasses when you look at this one. But already you have the feeling of a, of a sunset and all these clouds are rolling through there. And you can do it. All right. Now then, maybe... I want to keep this painting quite easy, in case this is your first time painting with us, this is a good one to do. So let's take some black and crimson and some thalo blue, we'll just mix all these colors together. Let me wipe my knife off, I'll be right back. Okay, let's go with our fan brush and load it full of paint, a lot of paint, load both sides full. All right, let's go up here. Now, right here, where we decided we decided our horizon would be, we're going to begin tapping in some basic little tree shapes. Look like little trees far away, and allow it to pick up some of that color. So some of them's lighter in the background. It looks like a light shining through. Don't fight this. It'll happen automatically. But sometimes we have a tendency to want to make it darker and darker. Let some of those remain lighter. It really will enhance your painting. There we go. That's one of those happy accidents. Let them happen. And we'll just let that go right on out like so. See, and that easy? We have the indication of some distant trees that are just living far away. There. And you can have as many or as few as you want. Now one thing that I notice when people first start is they'll put these trees too far apart like this, and they end up looking like fence posts. Should that happen, all you need to do 
Let's just add some little things in between. And it'll bring them together and make them look pretty good. There. And where we want this to go. There we go. Maybe here and there a real dark one. This might be a little bit closer. Now the super, super way of making the indication of some little tree trunks that live back in here without doing a lot of work. I'll show you how to do that. That's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Let me find another fan brush. I have several of each brush going here, so I don't have to waste all of my time cleaning. I like cleaning those brushes. I'm gonna just pull, just, just barely tap a little tiny bit of white into the brush. Just a little bit. See, none on that side. Just a little bit. Now, if we want to make this look like little trunks that are far away, just take it lightly, pull up. Just lightly. Just lightly pull up. Very light. Color shows up so much stronger on these black canvases. Just lightly. Here and there, there's light coming through, and you can see those little trunks that are far away. If you happen to get one that's too light, it's too bright, all you have to do is just go over it two or three times. And that dark color that we have underneath will just eat it up, and it'll go away. See, and already you have thousands of little tree trunks, and you haven't hardly done a thing. And that's the joy of painting. There. Mm. That's a pretty little painting already. Okay, I'll wash my fan brush. And that we just wash in the thinner, then wipe it on a paper towel. Like so. Now then, let me find, here's an old dirty two inch brush, we'll just use it. Now I want to begin creating some little grassy areas back here and, and create the lay of the land. So I'll take this brush. It has a little bit of that dark color on it. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to go right into some yellow. Let me reach up here and get some green. I'll be right back. There we are. A little touch of the sap green. But now tap downward with that brush. See? Do it slow so you can see. Tap. Let it slide a little bit. Okay, now then you have to make another big decision here. Where is our lay of the land? How does the, how does the land flow in this painting? Is there a hill here? I think there is. Maybe I'll have a little water. You know me, I love water. So all you gotta do is decide where you want your land to be and just start tapping. Just tapping, like so. Now in reality, if you had a sunset this bright, Chances are this wouldn't be quite this green, but it looks better. All these beautiful colors. And you know, when you, when you buy your first tube of paint, you get an artist's license. And that license says you can do anything that you want to do on this canvas. Maybe not anywhere else, but on this canvas, your artist's license gives you complete freedom. So we'll do that. And all I'm doing here is just tapping. There. Now, if you get one that's too bright, continue to tap it. And once again, the color underneath will be picked up and automatically will get darker. I am adding a little yellow ochre, Indian yellow here and there. Maybe I'll even touch a little bright red. Just however. But begin in thinking about a lay of the land. I know I say that over and over, but to me in a painting, that's very important. It's most important to have your land flow the way you want it to. Normally, if you have water, water is lazy. It's like me. It, it lays in a recessed area, so you need a hill or something here to show that there's a recessed area, a reason for the water being down there instead of up here. And do you not too worry about where you go here? We're going to have some reflections in this water, so anything that we don't like, uh, we'll turn it into reflections. Boy, I wish you could do that in the real world. But anyway, this is our world here, so we can do it here. Okay. And we just keep on this little hill. But isn't that fantastic? Look at the look at the way the land flows there. And the more you tap this, 
the darker and the softer it'll become. But it'll get very, very soft. Looks like velvet if you try. You can make little, little grassy areas that, oh, it's just some place you want to go and run through barefooted. Okay, you ever had any places like that? Let me wash this brush. <laughs> there goes the studio again. Okay, now then, if we're going to have some reflections under here, I'll go right into some yellow, right into the cat yellow. Just tap a little on the brush. It doesn't matter how you load it. Now you have to make another big decision. Where is your, where is your reflections going to live? If you want them right here, touch and pull straight down. Just grab it and pull straight down. Think about how the land would, would be underneath this grass, though. Just pull it straight down. Whew. Boy, hope you got your sunglasses on today. That's a bright sun of a gun. Beautiful. And maybe this water goes, we'll let it go right on up here. Now, the more you rub this, the darker it'll get because it's picking up the crimson and the other colors underneath all the time. It's continually picking them up. Now maybe into here, we want that to be the brightest. Now if you want to in your world, you could even take a little bit of titanium white and add to it and make it even brighter. See, now you remember what I was telling you, anything you don't like, you can turn into reflection. See, if you wanted to grab that, look at there. Of course, now I have to do it all the way across. But anything that you want, you can change to reflections here. Okay, if you want to add a little the titanium white, see how that makes it sparkle? Be sparing, Leona. Be sparing. Not too much. Don't want to overkill. Okay, now, very lightly, very lightly, come straight across. Even though this is going uphill, it's a tendency to go this way. Come straight across. See, just enough to wiggle it. You can move this and ripple it. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? you can create water that easy. Now then, let's go back. I'm going to take a little dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown, a little white. We just mix that together. And you don't have to worry about over mixing it, just like so. Cut off our little roll of paint that we use all the time, like so. Now then, come in here and you can begin making big decisions. Where's our water lines? And very lightly, just scrubbing. You can begin putting a, a little bank, a little shoreline. Just let it work its way right around. That's all there is to it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do anything. There it comes. Okay, just see there, wherever you want it. Okay. Now maybe over here on the other side. We need some we need some things happening over here too. We don't want this I'll go back to this big brush. Shoot is faster. We'll go right into a dark color. Like so. Now then we'll just use the corner of this brush and let's begin making some big decision. Maybe the other side is over here and there's little grassy things that live right out here. Like that. See so just close that in, turn it into a little little stream or a little river, it lives right down here. Whatever you want it to be. I tell you what, let's get crazy. Add a little more color here, I ran out of color. While we got this big old brush going, let's just get crazy with it. Maybe there lives a great big huge tree, right? Let's see, maybe that tree comes, oh my gosh. When I said big tree, I mean big tree. Didn't realize it was going to be that big, but that's all right. Whatever. Lexi, and I want it to sort of tilt, sort of lead your eye into the painting. And nature doesn't make all of its trees perfectly straight. Trees grow anyway that makes them happy. And that one grew right on off the canvas. Now then, maybe, I'll tell you what, 
when you're painting like this, a lot of times you just you look at a painting and you begin seeing things. You might not have planned them when you began this painting, but they happen. And learn to use whatever you see in your mind because very quickly, if you do much practicing, you'll learn to compose as you go along. And maybe there's a little, maybe right down here, there's a little peninsula of land that just sort of floats around. Just comes out there like so. And there's a little touch of highlight sparkling across there. This is just a little, tiniest little bit of white, but tiniest little bit. Tiny little bit, a little bit of dark underneath. Just sort of set it down into the water. See there? Create a little shadow underneath it. Then we can put a little tiny water line under there. Let that just sort of, maybe the water just bounces and plays right there. It's a little slow stream, it just has fun. Just plays and meanders along here. There. This is a little cad yellow with white, just to sparkle the water here and there. Okay. Now then, let's use the knife today. We could do this with a fan brush or a knife, whatever. I'm gonna take Van Dyke Brown and just cut off a little roll of paint. There it is. Now then, maybe there's a nice tree trunk goes right up through this big old tree. And if a tree's crooked, chances are, chances are, so is the trunk. We'll have two, and because this is so dark, you really don't have to put nothing but an outline. A little brown and white. It's the same color I was using for the, the little land areas. Put a few little indications here and there of a trunk. Maybe a little touch of white right on the edge, just where the light's really striking. It's really sparkly. And we can come back, let's use a one inch brush today. What the heck? Take a little yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, all the colors. Let me get over here and get some bright red too. What the devil? Okay, now then, let's put some happy little limbs that live right out here on this tree, little leaves. Oh, boy, them son of a guns are sparkling. Now, you've heard me over and over say, and I'll repeat it one more time, think about form and shape when you're doing this. Don't just throw these in at random. Think about all the little shapes. See there? All the little clumps. Let them sparkle. Let the sun shine through here. Use your artist license. Even if you get a little too bright. It's all right. They're pretty. So pretty, like that. There, see? Look at all them saddle guys. And you can put as many or as few as you want in your world. Just drop them in, like that. Okay, maybe down in here. Let's highlight some of these little things. There we go. Ooh, boy, that's a beautiful little sparkler there. Just drop them in. Now see, by putting some of these in front of that dirt area that we built, that'll push that right back. It's over the hill. We can't even see that. Now, maybe in here, maybe in here there's some little land areas. Just at random, wherever you want them. A few little dirt areas showing. That's just the brown and white that we use to make all the little colors, all the little banks and stuff. I mean, there, there's another little bush. Now think of individuals here. Don't just throw these in at random. You'll be unhappy with me. Think of individual little bushes that live here. And there. Give each one of them a name if necessary. I know that's a little crazy, but it's all right. It's our world. We can do that if we want to. Tell you what, I got a few minutes left here, so let's have some fun. Let's put us a happy little cabin over here. Shoot, this is such a pretty scene. You Need a place to live. There's one sign. There's the other sign. Man, you're painting if you don't want a little cabin. Don't put it in. You can put anything in your world that you want. I just want to show you how to do some of these things. And I just think this would be a super place 
to have a little cabin and sit and enjoy these beautiful sunsets. Let's use a little red, a little white, maybe a little yellow ochre. We'll make that sun we're going bright on the front. Whew. Sun striking there and all those beautiful colors are reflecting on that little cabin. And on the other side, we'll just use a little brown and white. It's not very dark. I mean, very light. It's in the shadow. A little bit of Van Dyke brown, make a door. And we can take a little, little bit of brown on the knife and just cut through. Put us some little slabs on that cabin. There. Little, nice little side. And we'll come right down and we grab a little red, a little dark sienna. A little touch of white, a little yellow ochre. And let's come right down this side here. And just let this knife bounce. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Got to make that little noise. See? And over here on the other side, a little touch of white with a little red in it, just to make that edge stand out a little so you can really see it. Like so. Then we can take our big brush, put some grass around his little foots, knife with a little brown, add in a little path. And I think your painting's about finished. Let's call this one done. I hope you enjoyed this one. This will teach you how to make a very simple sunset that'll work for you. From all of us here, happy painting and God bless.